evening, everybody. I hope everyone's doing well today. Today's broadcast is going to be talking about how to improve your MPGs. So this is going to be information for not only drivers and technicians. So if you are a technician and you're working on a fleet or you're working as a technician and you want to be able to give out some information or give some tips on how to give some MPGs, this information is going to be for you. I'm Adam with TAT Express. If you don't know me, this is your first time seeing me. Uh, I'm an ASC certified diesel technician. I've been servicing the DFW since 2008. I am a Air Force veteran. I was working on diesel engines first in the military. Always been mechanically inclined, always worked on trucks and uh, always worked on engines basically since I was uh since I was uh since I was old enough to turn wrenches, I always was interested in working on engines. So I've worked on small engines, um, dirt bikes, four wheelers, and worked my way up to diesel engines. Now we do mostly diesel engines. I appreciate everybody that's joined us. If you are in the DFW area, we do have a shop. Uh, if you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972 225 3017. We're located at 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas 75241. If you want to schedule an appointment online, it'd be a little bit more organized. We can get with you and we can schedule you in. So we hope everyone is doing great, ready for 2024. We have just a couple more days left. What today's the 28th. We just have a few more days left in 2023. If you follow the calendar, then um, great for you. If you're used to just working all the time, there's nothing's changed. As you know, transportation never ends. Um, everything's always moving more more than ever during the holidays when everybody's off work and out there buying stuff up and spending stuff at the at the stores and that's what that's what actually keeps us moving so today we're going to be talking about mpgs i'm going to be discussing basic fuel efficiency i'm going to talk about maintenance tips i'm going to also talk about aerodynamics and driving habits and lastly, uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit about technology and how technology is helping with fuel consumption. At the end, I'm going to do some Q&A. So if you have any questions or if you want to share any tips, be, be sure to hit us on chat. If Super Chat is available, hit us up on Super Chat if you want your comment it highlighted. We appreciate everybody that's joined us this evening. Make sure to hit that like and share. So today we're going to be talking about MPGs, as I mentioned. First, I'm going to be talking about just the basic fuel. So I want to explain the effects of fuel efficiency. So when we talk about diesel engines, of course, they're going to be producing, compared to a gasoline engine, passenger vehicle, they don't get as much MPGs. We're usually going to get anywhere in the sevens. If you're above seven, you're doing well. Modern trucks are doing more than that that is really the, around what you're going to be getting normally and that's how you can you kind of gauge your 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 the health of your engine there's different ways to to track track your mpgs you can do this by either your uh, something on your dash you know the dash is going to tell you your mpgs or you can actually write down your your gallons at your fuel station when you go on in fuel make sure to write down the gallons and then kind of write down your miles that you've ran off your odometer and then you can divide that you divide uh the gallons by your miles and that's going to give you a rough estimate of your mpgs or with a lot of these modern trucks you can just use the dash the dash is going to give you some indication on how your mpgs are doing now the importance of i mean mpgs are, are going to be there's different things that can that can affect mpgs okay miles per gallon or fuel efficiency so we're going to try to cover everything if i miss something make sure to to add it uh, a little bit warm in here we got the heater on today it was pretty cold uh earlier today so we got the heater on and hope you guys are staying warm so as i mentioned there's different there's different things that affect fuel efficiency okay so we're gonna try to discuss everything the first thing i want to discuss is maintenance okay maintenance regular maintenance and tuning up your truck okay regular maintenance is going to be oil changes which is mostly your fuel filters and and your oil if you do extended oil changes like i mentioned before make sure that you are are doing an oil analysis but since we're talking about fuel consumption make sure to change those oil, those fuel filters more often than extended okay because some of these some of these manufacturer specs and uh, 
it's a little warm in here, but some of these manufacturer specs will have uh, you change the fuel filters like high mileage, extended miles. But what you don't, what you need to consider is just the amount of condensation that are is that is in fuel in the fuel stations and it collects in your tank, and also just the amount of dirt that your fuel actually. Um, your fuel filter is going to be going to be filtering out. So if you're running a modern engine, a modern engine is going to have um, a high pressure fuel system. And these high pressure fuel systems are a little bit more delicate than a standard, a standard or older model fuel system. So it's very important to keep these fuel filters clean and the fuel filter or fuel going into the these into these injectors clean because of the high pressure systems they can they can definitely get clogged up a lot faster i shared a short today that had some fuel uh it was a technician that was doing a fuel filter replacement and he was able to find um metallic which was kind of like metal glitter in the fuel housing fuel filter housing and fuel filter these are signs of uh, a failed a failed fuel pump and if you don't catch that soon if you don't get that replaced or get that repaired right away that metal is just going to create more and more contamination in the system and where you're maybe just having to replace a fuel pump literature d a psl or most online manuals are going to suggest or recommend you replace all the injectors if metal contamination is in the in the fuel system and depending on how bad the contamination is you may have to replace injectors replace fuel pump and also get your tanks clean and depending on the contamination if you have tons of contamination in on you in your system you might have to get clean more than once so um, definitely keep an eye on your fuel filters, replace them. I would recommend replacing them every 15,000 miles because the fact that you're running them so long, you're running these trucks so long, you don't know the quality of fuel that you're getting at every fuel station. I know that they do have some quality control on the fuel system on, on diesel fuel, but there's not really regulations on how they have, uh, how, how they produce fuel, how they produce diesel as strict as how they produce gasoline gasoline is a lot more a lot more strict so they have a lot more guidelines to go by and a lot a lot more stricter a uh, guideline so diesel is just pretty much a dirty fuel it's been it's been very it's been a dirty fuel for a very long time so changing out those fuel filters is very helpful another maintenance tip is changing out your air filter okay air filters we notice we see this a lot in a shop and if you're a technician you can probably you probably see this a lot as well sometimes when you're doing a preventive maintenance and you're doing a, an oil change and you inspect the, the air filter, you can sometimes see that the date on there is probably more than a year old. Depending on what condition you're driving in, if you're driving in real dirty conditions, real dusty conditions, if you're going through yards that have a lot of rock, if you're, if you're driving through areas that have a lot of dust, then you may have to replace that, that air filter more often than I would say just a couple, couple months. I would try to get it done at least two to three months. Try not to go too far on it just because if you have a fuel, uh, if you, sorry, excuse me, if you have an air filter that's clogged and your engine is not getting enough air, in, into the into the combustion chamber then your air fuel mixture is going to be off and that's definitely going to cause you to have lower fuel mileage so that is just another maintenance tip that needs that actually needs to be taken care of fuel filters air filters and also you're going to be doing over overhead adjustments is what it's called that's basically just readjusting your valves on the top on the top hat on the top of your engine most modern engines have a overhead cam so if you're not familiar with engines uh, a cam is what what opens and closes the exhaust and intake valves so what drives on the cams is rockers they're just like big hands so they're just they they run on the rock on the on the cam and they push down the the valve stems and and that's how they open the intake and exhaust and everything works uh just basically works kind of like it's 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 an engine so everything's working in sync so if you have valves that are out of adjustment there's adjustments that are on top of that and that needs to be done every 500,000 miles so if that's not kept up 
If you have valves that are out of adjustment, that are too tight or too loose, then you're not getting your air fuel mixture correct, and that's going to that's gonna cause your MPGs to go down. 500,000 miles, every 500,000 miles is what's it's recommended. You can do that every 500,000 miles, which is up to about five years, and then I would do it maybe every two years just to make sure that everything's nice and, and adjusted. We have a, a 60 series in the shop now which had a, a issue with uh, low fuel consumption, and we ended up doing the valve adjustment. He did just get this engine rebuilt a couple of years ago by Stuart and Stevenson, but what we found out is that they didn't replace the head for some reason. So we did found a bent valve. We went ahead and did the overhead on it and we found a bent valve. And that is basically something that needs to be repaired because even if you have a valves adjusted and you can see the difference in, in the adjustment screws, you'll have screws that are tight, taller than the other. Um, whenever you're adjusting, adjusting these these valves, they basically have adjustment screws on the on the end of it with a jam nut. Now, you, whenever you do a, a full adjustment, you can look at the, the, the threads that are left on the top of that jam nut, and that's going to kind of give you an indication that everything looks uniform. So if you want your intake, your intake uh, adjustment threads to be the same uh, and your exhaust, exhaust to be the same. So if you see any kind of difference there and you're not able to get that out, then that's definitely going to cause some, some fuel consumption. Uh, excessive fuel consumption so that's something that you definitely need to keep an eye on keeping an overhead valve adjustment changing your fuel filters changing your air filter yesterday we talked about tires and fuel fuel consumption excessive fuel consumption can be caused by tires that are bad alignments that are out of uh, your if you have a truck that's out of alignment if you have low air in your tires or bad tires, this is going to cause the truck just to work more and, of course, cause more fuel consumption. So keep an eye on your tires. If you're doing pre-trips, make sure your tires are aired up, doing your alignment on your truck. And if you're a technician, make sure that all these things are taken care of. If you have a truck that comes in and it has a complaint of excessive fuel consumption look over these things the basic things are going to be your air filter your fuel filter and making sure that maintenance is kept up um most of the time when we have trucks come in there are there is a lot of maintenance that's been overlooked or that hasn't been taken care of so when all when that happens and you have a lot of maintenance built up and, and you have the truck come in because of a check engine like or or any kind of audible noise or anything that's going on mechanically as a technician we need to get all the maintenance up to date just to kind of exclude that any of that's going to be a problem so if you have fuel high fuel consumption you have a technician that's not going to ensure that the fuel filter has been replaced recently or the air filter has been replaced or the valves have been adjusted those are real simple items that can really boost your mpgs and not only that checking on uh, checking your suspension making sure that you have an alignment done and your truck is aligned and the trailers aligned these are all things that are going to help your truck get better mpgs and as a technician if you overlook these things these are those items can come up even if you try to repair oh you know what it's probably this is probably that it's going to be a lot easier just to take care of the maintenance let the truck be road tested again now you have a better baseline and you know that all the maintenance has been taken care of so you have a better chance of trying to figure out what's going on uh, with the truck when it comes to excessive fuel consumption so proper maintenance when we talk about tire inflation this is something that's probably going to be need to look need to be checked and inspected at least weekly if you have if you have of course if you're a driver or a technician drivers of course you have to check your truck every day technicians you're going to check those trucks anytime that you do a maintenance or anytime you do any type of repair on a truck and you want to check the entire truck at our shop we do a a free digital inspection so if you're coming in just for a pm or uh, preventive maintenance um we will we're going to do a complete a complete digital inspection which is more than an inspection that you're going to get on the roadside and we're going to take pictures 
anything that we find we're going to take pictures and send it to you so that's that's what we do at our shop so that you can physically see and you can actually see in real time what's going on with your truck so if you have maintenance that's that needs to get done make sure to get it scheduled you can come in we're open we're going to be open up we're closing just on new year's i know the holidays were kind of uh funny let me see. New Year's. I don't even know when, what day New Year's is. Okay, so Monday we're going to be closing, but we're going to be back open on Tuesday. So if you guys are if you guys are not going to be in the area uh, and you want to schedule a schedule an appointment, be sure to uh, to get us get get scheduled in and definitely give us a shout and we're going to get you in. Sorry, I just saw a message pop up. So maintenance is very important. Get that done. As a technician also, if you're servicing a truck that has a long list of maintenance that hasn't been done, be sure to recommend all that maintenance before you actually try to get into some any repairs because if maintenance hasn't been kept up, you definitely can... Um, the definitely will still have some problems going on, especially when it comes to fuel efficiency. So regular tune ups and oil changes are very important. If you have a scheduled maintenance interval for your PMs, stay on that. OK, 15 to 20,000 miles probably is the most that I would go. If you have to extend it even further, you know, it's I would at least do the fuel filters. Make sure your oil is good. If you can do an oil analysis, I know some people are not doing PMs. Most fleets will extend their PMs just to save money. And a lot of fleets do this. And a lot of fleets do this because most of the time they're going to be trading in those trucks around 400 to 500,000 miles. So a lot of the problems that happen, the major maintenance when it comes to 400, 500,000 miles, you're going to need more maintenance than the basic maintenance that I'm mentioning, which is oil changes and, and tune ups. You're basically going to have to do DPF filter replacements. DEF filters are once a year. You're going to have to replace that air filter or air dryer um, just to keep your air system um, dry because if you want to get too much condensation you're going to have leaks all over the place so these fleets do that these fleets will trade their trucks in they have an agreement with whoever they bought the trucks from to get a, a large credit on on what on what they're going to be trading in those trucks for so that's what they'll do they'll tr they'll they'll skip out on a lot of maintenance just to get those tr keep those trucks on the road longer and then trade them in so if you are buying a truck and you're buying a fleet truck i've mentioned this before you can watch how to buy used trucks on some of my other videos and maybe i'll do a, a new video on that but if you're buying a truck and it and you go to a dealer and there's a whole line of trucks there and they all look the same they're basically coming from a fleet and they've uh, they've already been traded in for newer models some fleets are sticking with their trucks a little bit longer, but if you are buying a truck from a fleet, be sure to really check it out. Get the get the maintenance maintenance history on that. And if you can get a third party shop to check it out, check it out. They can we can pull up computer, we can put up data information, abuse history. We can really pull up a lot of data just from the software and it gives us a better understanding of of something that could be uh, a problem that could be happening very often and you can basically try to avoid buying a bad truck. So very, very important. Maintenance is very important. The next topic I want to talk about is weight distribution. So I know that it's a headache to get these trucks loaded. Sometimes you're waiting for a long time and then, of course, you got to go get fuel. There's weight. There's weights at the scale. But it's very important to check the scale and check your weight and make sure your weight's distributed correctly. If your weight is not distributed correctly or if you're overweight, you're definitely going to pull more fuel and it's going to cause more uh, more burning of fuel and excessive fuel consumption. So weight distribution is very, very important as well. This is a tip mostly for drivers. But as a technician, this is something that you can share as well to anyone that you're giving service to that has MPGs declining or they want to increase the MPGs. Weight distribution is very important. If you have too much weight on the front, uh, and you know that's why there's different ways that's why you have the sliding the sliding fifth wheel and you also have a f sliding tandem on the trailer so make sure that your weight distribution is good i appreciate everybody that's joined us this evening if you want to add anything go ahead and hit it hit me up in the comments i'm going to get to the comments here 
shortly but right now we're still going to try to stay on the topic of increasing your mpgs as technicians and as drivers this is good information to to retain so that you can actually share this to if you're servicing or if you're a driver the next item i want to discuss or the next topic we're going to be discussing is going to be the aerodynamics and the driving habits okay so the newer trucks the Cascadias and Freightliners come are coming out with even more aerodynamic. Whenever the Cascadia first came out, I, it was kind of like I mean it, it is basically the Mercedes of of uh, of semi trucks. So when that came out and the aerodynamics, Kenworth is probably were the first one that came out with that type of uh, sleek look. But that's that sleekness is helping you with error. Uh, air drag so you're not dragging so much air or pushing against so much air of course you're you're cutting through the air a lot a lot smoother so it is those the newer trucks do get better fuel consumption even with volvos as well all the modern trucks are are really getting more aerodynamic so they can they can cut through that that air a lot and have less resistance again when you're driving on the road got an ad popping up you guys let me know what they what that ad's about hopefully it's about fuel uh, fuel consumption or excessive fuel consumption the next the next tip i want to discuss is driving habits now this is going to be uh, more towards drivers but as technicians you can share this information if you're servicing someone's truck so driving tips is you cannot drive a truck like a car okay i know most of the drivers are so used to being in a car so when you get in that truck you just want to give it throttle and go keeping within the speed limit or even below the speed limit just because nowadays the speed limit is so high we're looking at 75 in some areas and most of them are giving you a grace of five miles per hour above so most people are doing 80 80 or and above you're not going to get good fuel mileage doing 80 miles an hour okay so 65 70 i mean i've seen the best fuel mileage and this is feedback that i get from drivers and customers that we service in the shop um, around 65 miles an hour no more than 70 you're going to get good fuel mileage you're going to get better fuel mileage okay also another tip i'd like to mention is whenever you're accelerating let's 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 treat the throttle as if you have an egg in between the your foot and the throttle okay so you don't want to break that egg Okay, so whenever you're pushing on that gas, let's try to imagine that there's an egg between your foot and the foot pedal. So you don't want to put too much pressure to break the egg. So you want to just baby that down. And that's how you're going to go through acceleration. If you have a manual, you just go, you know, you, you creep your speed up, go to the next one. Don't throttle it down. You're going to, if you push that throttle too hard, imagine it, imagining that egg, you're going to break that egg. So this is just a driving tip that actually that I picked up on how to on how to increase your MPGs. Now, in, increasing it, increasing MPGs is very important because fuel is your number one cost, your number one cost when it comes to operating a truck. So this information is not only going to be useful for a fleet for drivers and technicians, but fleet owners, fleet managers that are in charge of uh, major trucks or major fleets, anybody that's dispatching trucks that sees that, oh, this truck is, is using more fuel than, than another truck, then you would have to consider the driving habits. And this is why a lot of major fleets are going with going with automated and more using more technology which is the next subject i'm going to talk about is the technology that we can use now to increase our mpgs i uh, hope everyone's doing well thank you everybody for joining us i hope everybody had a good christmas if you didn't have a chance to celebrate christmas don't be um don't be down Ever, there's a lot of people out here that are still working through the holidays, especially in the transportation sector, because there's just so much. Uh, a lot of work is happening when everybody's off work. So everybody's moving. Everybody's at stores. People are buying stuff. Everyone's spending money. So that causes a lot of uh, merchandise to be moved. Food needs to be reshelved. That's a lot of movement that happens. And drivers are the ones and also technicians we're the ones that are having to keep these trucks moving so those shelves will stay stocked because you don't want 
to run out of food at the grocery store or if you need to buy some clothing and nothing's there furniture is not there these are items that are all being shipped by trucks and if you're in the, the midwest or uh, anywhere in the south texas of course a lot of fuel is being moved as i mentioned in my last broadcast texas or the united states produce more oil than any country in 2023 which is very big another article that i had read about texas alone and i'm only talking about texas is because i'm from texas but it it was an article that read that texas is so big and and so robust that if it decided to be its own country it would be listed the eighth most productive country uh measured by gpd so that's that's pretty large that's pretty large and i, I think a, a main reason is because we're connected to mexico and we have a lot of we have the connection there so that that's definitely and especially all the oil reserves that we have and we're having to extract because of the political political conflict that's going on we don't have the the resources or the connections that we did before or the international relationships that we had before so we have to be more independent so they, these are all tips on on how to keep your on how to keep your fuel consumption uh, at a at a decent. I mean, we're looking around seven and above is really what you want to be at. I appreciate everyone that's joined us. I'm going to be getting into the comments here, the Q and A here shortly, or later on in the broadcast. I want to next the next topic I want to be talking about. We just discussed driving tips to help. Okay, so we know not to drive. 80 90 miles an hour we know not to drive a truck like it's a car if you are with that type of driver and you you are experiencing excessive fuel consumption then that's basically what you're 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 gonna have to change your practices of driving when i talked about the aerodynamics if you look at this older truck in my background now this is an older truck you can see that it's really boxy uh, we got the camera still cutting off on me. <clears throat> Apologize about that still. So if you see this truck behind me, it's really boxy. It's not really cutting through the air. These types of trucks are going to get lower fuel mileage. The Western Stars, um, those are lower fuel mileage trucks. The most mileage that I see is going to be out of like the Cascadia's or even the MX 13s. It has the the pack car has a decent, decent fuel consumption. Volvos are, are good fuel consumption. They got really good MPGs. But the most this is why modern engines are trying to get extract even more energy out of the fuel so that you can it can because really, if you look at a if you look at a diesel or most engines, and we'll stay on diesel engines, but diesel engines usually uh, they don't capture all they, they capture a lot of the energy when it comes to how much fuel they're using and they're able to produce that much power. But they're actually not capturing all the energy possible. So a lot of the energy that goes out the exhaust, I would say an engine's probably capturing 30 percent of the energy. So this is technology. And over the over the years, technology is advancing more and more to capture more of this this energy to produce it into power. But right now we're looking around, I would say, 30 percent of the of what the engine is actually producing is power and 70 percent of it is lost. So that's why MPGs are so low. But there's a big demand on these engines. And over time, these we we see MPGs increasing, and increasing. If this broadcast gets replayed in another 10 years we're probably looking at 10 miles to the gallon being an average or maybe higher maybe not that fast just because of um everyone holding on to the older pre-emissions engine so maybe not that fast but with the newer model engines they are their goal is to not only cut down emissions but to increase mpg so it's not really bad to own newer trucks they're quieter they're more efficient and they can get better mpgs they're more aerodynamic they're more comfortable and next we're going to be talking about technology solutions now i know there's a lot i see a lot of articles about drivers not being too on board with technology and i understand you're in a truck for a very long time and you don't want invasion of privacy you don't want cameras facing you but 
a lot of these technologies are actually helping. And I know I'm talking about cameras, but most of these newer trucks and it, are using sensors. And if you don't have a newer truck or a modern truck, we can go down to the basics of cruise control. Okay. Using cruise control is very useful, but I want to give you a tip about cruise control. Cruise control is useful on flat ground. Okay, so if you're driving along on a flat on flat plane, you can use a a a um, um, I'm sorry, I just I uh, you can use your your cruise control. Sorry about that. You can use your cruise control on flat ground and that's fine. Okay, boom, you're using your cruise control. Now, when you start going up an incline. Now the computer, your, your, your cruise control is trying, is going to try to keep that same speed. So just as I mentioned about the egg between your foot uh, and the, and the gas pedal, the, the cruise control is not going to do that. So once you start going up on an incline and you start decreasing speed, it's going to do its best to bring that speed up. It doesn't really know that you're on an incline unless you're with these newer model engines that are actually able to map map out the the uh, incline that's coming up and that's definitely gonna low it's what it's gonna do is gonna creep that incline a little bit slower than just trying to just trying to bull up that incline and when you tr do try to try to really gas it up that incline or you leave cruise control on and you see it drop and you see your sp or the speed limits drop in the cruise control is gonna do its best to just bring that speed limit or that speed all the way up and that's going to just be pushing that fuel causing more fuel consumption so definitely something to, to keep in mind if you're using cruise control shout out to everybody that's joined us today appreciate everybody that's on on live on this broadcast if you don't have time to watch this you can watch this later i'm going to get to some of the questions here shortly Uh, I see a question or a comment that just popped up about the 30%. Yeah, that's 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 the engines for you. And that's gasoline engines as well. You can look it up that they're not actually capturing that much energy. A lot, if you look at all the energy that's being dispersed out of the exhaust, that's a lot of energy. I mean, that's why turbochargers are more efficient because they're using the wasted energy from the from the engine, which is exhaust, which is wasted energy going out of going out of the exhaust and now they they well it's it's more efficient to use a turbo instead of like a supercharger because a supercharger is using the engine to rotate and create the the um the boost pressure where where a turbo is just using spent spent uh energy which is exhaust to create to create boost so definitely turbos are more efficient i know that um smaller engines are using two-stage turbos turbos for so so that you can actually get boost on the low end instead of waiting for the high rpms but they don't do two turbos anymore caterpillar was doing double turbos a long time ago but newer engines are just sticking with straight turbos uh the newer dd15s actually took off the turbo electric turbo actuator and they're going with straight turbo and there, with so much um, with so much combustion, the high the high compression ratio, it's able to to produce even more boost at lower RPM. So a lot of times, what they were doing is using um, VGT, which is electronically controlled turbos, to try to create more boost at lower RPMs. But with so much heat going into the onto the turbo, one of the turbos creating a lot of heat. And of course, they put a, a, a an electric electric um, component on the turbo It's not it's not going to last a really long time. It's too hot. It's too hot. They even the engineers even went in and put coolant lines. They put coolant lines that run through the the electric electric actuator on the turbo to try to keep it cool. But over time, those actuators really burn up. And that style turbo is not actually being. Uh, put on to the modern engines anymore, which is really a, something that should have been done since the beginning. But I, I remember when VGTs first started coming out on the Series 60 with uh, when when emissions control when they were looking to control emissions, and that that's what they were doing is using the VGTs, but they don't use them anymore on the modern engines. I don't I know some engines are still using them, but like the DD15, I feel like. The DD15 is is a very um, 
advanced engine. And the reason why I say that is because we all know that Daimler bought them out. Daimler has an extensive experience in German technology and just efficiency when it comes to engine and engine production by Mercedes. So that is why they're bringing that technology over to the DD15. And not to down anybody else that has a Packard or has a Volvo. Those are all these engines are really stout engines as long as you keep up with maintenance and you follow these tips that I'm that I'm giving you on excessive fuel consumption, you should get good fuel mileage. But sticking with technology with um, advances in technology, it's definitely helping with with uh, with fuel mileage and safety. A lot of this safety is going more um, towards the towards safety. A lot of technology is going more towards the safety because like lane assist and also driver assist when it comes to braking, following distance, which most of the time, I don't know what happened with following distance, but nobody follows uh, uh, follows following distance anymore. The, the the second the few second rule from when you're passing something you definitely have to have some cars so car links in front of you right now it just seems like if you have following distance that someone's just gonna just cut you off and get into that space which is just definitely bad driving habits so try to still keep your following distance what I've noticed and this is just my personal experience when I'm driving Everyone's just in a rush. Everyone's racing. Everyone's move, pushing each other, getting each other out of the way. But if you really just kind of relax and know, hey, well, I'm going to get there, maybe put something on, relaxing, some music on, relaxing, take your time and be the example on the road, okay? Because when you're the example on the road, when you're giving people following distance, when you're putting your hazards on, when you see some braking happening up front, and you're being that cautious driver, you're leading by example out there. And as someone with the CDL, you guys have a lot more liability, you have a lot more risk if you do get into an accident or you have anything that's negative on your driving record. That's definitely going to go and be an impact on, on you as especially if you're a driver and, and that's and that's your way of, of doing business. And that's your way of producing money. If you're out there and you're driving recklessly, it's over time. It's going to catch up to you and especially on your driving record. So definitely try to be the example, the uh, leader of example out there. Lead by example. Drive, drive, drive nice. Um now, I did see something about fuel additives. Now, I'm not a big fan of fuel additives um, just because some of the fuel additives can cause your fuel to be thicker. Now, and that's that's can clog up fuel filters. It can starve injectors. It can cause issues with your with your fuel, your fuel, especially with these modern engines. So if you are using fuel additives, be sure to do your research and make sure that they are they are specced out and it's designed for your particular model because some of these older model trucks, older model engines can run off of these and 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 run off of these uh, fuel additives and not have any issues. But some of these modern engines you can cause clog fuel filters and cause just some more problems. So definitely, definitely. Um, do not definitely do some research if you're going to be using some some fuel additives. We today's sponsorship is sponsored by TAT Express. We're sponsoring ourselves. So if you're in a DFW area and you're looking for service, if you're backed up on maintenance and you need to get some rapid service, give us a shout. 972-225-3017. We're in a Dallas Fort Worth area just off of Interstate 20 and Bonneview. So we're just south of the TA and off of Interstate 20 in Bonneview. So if you're passing through and you need some work, give us a shout. If you have some major work that you need done, give us a shout. We'll be more than happy to help you. We do professional work. We have all the, all the up-to-date equipment, all the up-to-date manuals, all up-to-date uh, tools, anything that we need, we get it. We don't try to um, turn around and do a makeshift job or a, you know, if we don't have a tool, we're going to make it happen without the tool. Especially when you're doing any type of engine work, it's very important to get the right tools and follow manuals to, to the T because there's a reason why all these steps are put in place and all these procedures are put in place. So, so that's how we're going to optimize our fuel. I appreciate you guys all 
uh, stay in tune. Now we're going to be discussing some of the Q and A that we have. So we have any questions, make sure you, you, if you're watching and you're on and you have some questions, let's hit us up. So we're going to be checking out these comments. Now I know that we I have a list of comments here. Uh, Jamie, pre appreciate you joining us. You're very, very, uh, good, good viewer. I know you guys are, you, you join us pretty often. How do I got rid of this part right here? Appreciate Jamie joining us. Good evening. DL says, how much do we charge for our diagnostic checks before you buy it? Now we can do a, we can, we can basically just look over the truck for you and do a diagnostics, hook up the computer, do a, uh, an inspection, a DOT inspection. Um, I don't have a price for you. It just depends on what we need to look up. If, if we're just going to be looking over the truck, you're probably looking anywhere from 100 to 200 to take a look at the truck. We can give you a printout of what the ECM is reporting. We can give you a report on, we can give you a report. I would just go ahead and shoot high. So I would say 220 to 250 to do that, to do that, hook up the computer, inspect the entire truck, give you photos, give you a readout on what the history looks like, the maintenance, the maintenance history. If there is any maintenance history, some of the computers, sometimes the computer is going to keep keep on track of that, especially if we're able to uh, connect to the server. We're able to see what service has been done, uh, especially um, when the abuse reports is one of the most important. A lot of times whenever you have a dealer trying to sell a truck, what they'll do is just reset the codes so you won't have a check engine light. You won't have a check engine light like when you buy it. But by resetting the codes and then once you run that truck there, that's whenever you're going to actually see your problems and having issues. So definitely a, a, an issue uh, to look for. Do not just buy blindly is what I say. Um, give me some examples. Uh, guys, share your success stories. And if you guys are doing stuff to improve your fuel efficiency, make sure to share it in the comments or even after the live. So definitely, uh, definitely good information here. And DL, I definitely will get that truck checked out before you buy it. Let's safely say a full inspection would be 220 to 250. I know it keeps going up every time I mention it. Uh, the shop was gonna. It will give you an exact price. I would say about 220 to get it checked out, fully inspected, and that's that's gonna lift it up. Look under it as well. Uh, we'll check all your oil levels, all your differential levels, transmissions, check all your fluids just to give you a good um, a good information, a good overall check on what your truck needs. If you're buying it or if it's a bad truck, because sometimes we just by listening to the truck, if it sounds rough uh, it, and if it's like 500,000 miles and it sounds really, really bad, then I would say get, don't get that truck. If we connect to the truck and we see a history of of after treatment problems and something that's that's really occurring then that's that could be a problem not every time the old owners are going to be maintaining those trucks and keeping those trucks up to par then and when you buy it that basically you're buying all those problems so as i mentioned before these fleets won't do all that maintenance and that maintenance will get all backed up so when you when you buy that truck now all that maintenance is stuck on you and steer clear from these bad designs like international had these pro stars with their design of engine and that was just trash it's a trash engine do not do not buy if you have an international okay i uh do your best to keep it maintained don't do the excessive island but Honestly, that engine has already been discontinued, and it's it's really a bad engine. I know that International is coming out with a new design. We haven't had too much experience with that one, but we know that the older in International engines are very complicated and challenging when it comes to keeping those up and going. Appreciate everyone joining us. Full inspection. Hopefully, I was able to answer your question. I want to buy. DL has another comment here. He says he wants to buy. He wants to buy a truck, an old truck. I need to check it out before I buy it. So can I make sure that it will work good over the road? How much do you charge? Okay, 220 to check it out. I know I, I went up from there, but I, I was just thinking about everything that we're going to be checking out for you. So uh, if you're going to go with an older truck, you 
I know you probably want to go with pre-emissions. Everyone wants to go pre-emissions. But think about if even if it's an older truck and it's already been rebuilt, the engine. Okay, and it has uh, over a million plus on the chassis. The chassis needs to be kept up and maintained as well. So if you have suspension, kingpins, leaf springs, bushings, rear suspension, U-bolt stretched out, this is a lot of stuff that needs to be maintained. Shocks, airbags, cab, cab mounts. All, all The whole chassis needs to be maintained as well. So just because it's a pre-emissions truck, and it's been it just been recently rebuilt doesn't mean you're not going to have any additional problems so definitely keep that in mind when buying a truck 4140 langdon road dallas texas 75241 you can call us at 972-225-3017 we'll be more than happy to help you out or you can schedule us online at tatexpressing.com check out our contact us page all our information is going to be there. You can schedule an appointment. Somebody will call you and we'll schedule you in. Currently, we have one uh, one technician out. So we, we are a little bit, we're not, I wouldn't say short staff, but we have a, a, just a lower manpower due to the holidays, which is very normal. But we, we are scheduling our work very, very well. So the only day we're going to be off is Monday. So we're back on tomorrow. We're off on Monday and we're back on Tuesday. So if you look at any, if you're in the DFW area, we're off of Interstate 20 and Bonneview, just south of TA. Come check us out. Good evening, Space. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate you commenting here in the chat. Appreciate your chat. DLs, um, Billy here. Billy says, Class 8 truck MPG. I remember when our highways had separate speed limit signs for trucks. Really? Now you no longer see them. Now semi trucks are running 80 plus. There's poor amp. Yep. Billy, thanks for joining us. Billy has a comment. He said he remembers when trucks, when they used to post separate speed limits signs for trucks compared to, and you know what? I think I remember that as well. Well, I don't remember the truck one, but I do remember like the day and night speed limits that they had. But yeah, you're right. It's a free for all right now. Everyone's just doing 80 plus. Everyone is just, and if you're messing with tollways, man, I don't know where if you if you guys experience this, or if you if anyone experiences this anywhere else, but Texas Texas tollways, especially George Bush, I swear it, it's it's almost like you feel like you're in NASCAR. Everyone is doing. You can be doing 90 and you still can't keep up with everybody. Everyone's just flying. And vehicles that don't even have no business doing 90 miles an hour. A truck definitely shouldn't be doing 90 miles an hour. You're going to be guzzling a lot of fuel to be going that fast and pulling that much freight. So just because your truck can do 90 don't mean you should be doing 90. That's very dangerous. A car doing 90 is dangerous. And, and something comes in the road and you have to. It is giving you no room for error when you're going that fast. So. Billy, I appreciate that comment. I, if you remember truck truck signs being posted for different speed limits, separate speed limits on truck signs, that's that's been a long time. I, ha, I have not seen that. DL has another comment, another here in chat. Hey, make sure to hit us up in Super Chat. He says, can a 2009 Freightliner plug in ELD into the computer to automatically log hours for service? Well, yes. Now, if you're looking to get into an older model so you can do paper logs, so you can, you know, fudge your fudge your your book up, you know, that's that's on you. Uh, E-logs are very important. I know that not too many people are on with E-logs, but in some areas where where E-logs before E-logs and paper logs, I know people can still kind of, you know, move around their E-logs as well. But now. It's very challenging because FMCSA is requiring that all carriers keep a file and records of all their driver services, all the hours of service. So uh, most of them now are having to keep it digitally and, and turn that in digitally. And most fleet managers and carriers actually look at that to make sure you're not going over your hours. Because if you do go over your hours Okay, you like e-logs. Yeah, you can you can definitely hook up an e-log. If it has a uh, data port for hooking up a computer, you're going to definitely be able to hook up your e-log. And I, I apologize if I was um, 
uh, thinking that you didn't want to do e-logs. But it, yeah, you can do, uh, you can definitely hook up an e-log on an 09 model. Anything that has a data port so that you can hook up a computer, you definitely can run data, uh, logs on those. But as I was mentioning, a lot of this, a lot of these hours of service, if, if, if a driver is caught out of service, uh, or going over his hours, the carrier gets penalized. Now, if you create a record of, of most, um, a lot of penalties, a lot of violations, then the FMCSA, that's going to raise a red flag for them. Now they want to do an audit. Now, when the FMCSA comes into your, to your facility and does an audit, they're going to not just audit a, uh, your hours of service. They're going to audit everything. They're going to audit your maintenance. They're going to audit your, of course, your hours of service. They're going to audit all your documentation for safety. All this information has to be on and on point because it's a point system. And if you come in and you get you get uh, audited and you have all these violations, all oh, this is points off. This is more points off. This is more points off. And basically, you can lose your lose your uh, use your lose your authority. Now, I'll, I would like to share a story. OK, now I used to run trucks. And, um, we don't run trucks anymore. I would, I would love to still run trucks, but I want to focus more on just our shop because it's tough to keep so much things going on. So I used to run trucks and this was back. I want to say, I don't have an exact year, but I would say if I had to guess, if I had to guess it was before we were at, if we, it was before we were at one sixteen. And we were on 915 Finn Road over there by Loves. So I would say probably a good eight, maybe eight years ago, I used to run um, trucks and I had some older trucks and uh, they we used to run out of California. And I when I first started moving trucks, I used to move trucks um, and I, I used to go with, um, you know, go on load boards. And, and that was very common. But then you start making contacts and of course you want to look for the good freight. So I made this contact out of California and this guy had a lot of freight coming out of California, a lot of refrigerated freight coming from California. It was a lot of produce. So it was very good, very well paid produce. So it was good work. Now I was still working in the shop. It was before we grew as, as, as where we're at now. And I didn't have all the all the people that I have now to be able to keep on top of the trucks. So I was it was my mistake for letting this this guy. It was my my authority, but I was allowing him to get the drivers and just turn in the paperwork to me. And I would be the one keeping up with the paperwork. Now, I was doing that for a little bit. And um, OK, one time the truck gets pulled over, the truck gets pulled over in Arizona. OK, now this is a mistake that I made, and I hope you guys don't make the same mistake by trusting somebody in a business where you are the one liable for it. So the truck gets pulled over, find out that the driver's not even licensed. He didn't even have a CDL, no paperwork on him. OK, I didn't even know this. I didn't even know he, he's the one who got the driver. He's the one who got the driver. And uh, so I thought everything was legit. I thought everything was good. So we get pulled. The truck gets pulled over in Arizona. The driver doesn't have a driver's license. Shit hits the fan. Excuse my language. Shit hits the fan. I get upset. OK, I get upset because I didn't know who was driving the truck or and it, and it was my fault for trusting somebody so much. So don't do this. OK, uh, long story short, FMCSA ends up. Of course, we get a bunch of points because of that. And FMCSA ends up coming and doing an audit. Now, I'm running the shop. I'm, you know, juggling, trying to be a carrier at the same time. This happens. FMCSA comes to my shop because that's where my carrier information is, is based at. And they want to open book. They want to open up everything. They're going through all my filing cabinets. They're... And those those violations were stacking to a point where I lost my authority. I lost my authority. They they re, they took the authority away. And that was a lesson that I had learned about FMCSA and keeping up with your authority. So 
that was just a, a short story that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, I've been in this, I've been in the industry for a very long time. That was my, one of my first authorities. I was able to rein, reinstate that authority over time, but I had to do a lot to get that reinstated. I wasn't able to run those trucks for uh, a period of time. I had to lease them on to another company to be able to move my trucks because my authority was just shot. And it wasn't, I actually, was trying it took a long time to get that authority back i had to pay fines um and when i when i address the con my contact the one that put the driver in that truck because i trusted him it was my mistake unfortunately you cannot trust a lot of people in business uh especially uh in in the west people are more just focus on themselves and uh that's just what a capitalist country a capitalist environment is people are mostly wor worried about themselves so this this uh this contact really burned me but these are lessons to learn i don't hold any grudges against him i don't hold any grudges against anybody i learned the lesson and i'm like okay i'm not doing that again this is uh, this is the environment this is how business is business is cutthroat not everybody's gonna be your friend and this is very, very uh, common when it comes to business. So I wanted to share that. Very important to keep up with uh, with safety. Didn't mean to get off subject, but I hope you were able to get some information from that or any information from this live. If you, anybody gets any useful information from this live, it's been a successful live. Space, space pandas, will you speak about fuel additives? I did speak just a little bit about fuel additives. I, I don't have an exact if you are a manufacturer or you're a seller, um, a vendor of any fuel additives and you would like to send me some information, let me know. Maybe we can collaborate. I can uh, I can market, uh, can promote your 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 services or promote your your product. If you're interested in that, contact us info at T.A.T. Express dot com. That's our email address, info at tatexpressinc.com if it, we are looking for sponsorships. How much for a valve adjustment at your shop? I have a Peterbilt with a Packard MX-13. You're looking anywhere from 400 to 500 bucks estimated. Hopefully that. Speaking of technology, one day I'm going to have this M50 mirrorless uh not shut off on me during live streams if anybody watching this is um if anybody's watching this and knows how to keep that from cutting off please share the tips otr thanks for the thanks for the comment my dad is a retired grocery hauler himself. He found his best MPGs was actually going four miles below the speed limit. Thank you for thank you for sharing that. As I mentioned before, when we talked about tips on how to save fuel, driving uh, habits is very very is, is it's a it's a I mean driving habits it's it's like a car. If you're driving your car ninety everywhere you go, eighty everywhere you go, hauling hauling ass everywhere you go. That fuel is going to get consumed faster and it's more with the truck, more with the truck. So definitely. So his tip, this comment, his tip is four miles below the speed limit. So if we're 70, you should be doing about 65. And that's what I was saying. 60, 65, 65 is fair. Stay in a slow lane, stay in that lane over there. Trucks shouldn't be in the fast lane anyway. Drivers, they don't know how to drive anymore. Cars don't know how to drive. People are so distracted. They're all on their phones and they're, they're handing out driver's license like like um, like participation trophies. And they're they're doing the same with with CDLs now. There's such a, a demand for for good drivers in some areas that they're just handing out handing out CDLs like participation trophies. So if you are pretty new out there as a driver just you know take your time as a technician as well take your time if you're getting if you're getting into the field or if you are a technician and you're viewing this you, it's the same as a speed limit you don't want to be trying to hurry and go through this work and try to rush through the work take your time okay because you're going to just create a more stressful environment when you're trying to rush through it same with driving if you're trying to rush you're creating that environment you're creating a stressful environment for yourself because you think 
I need to get there. I need to hurry up and get there. I'm driving fast. All right, if you slow down, let me enjoy this ride. Let me put some music on and maybe listen to something smoothing. Maybe listen to an audio book, uh, something. Automobile University is what Zig Ziglar used to call it when he when when audio tapes were very popular and he was uh, selling a lot of motivational uh, content. He would sell it in tapes and he would call it automotive university. So audio books are very useful for self-improvement. Uh, guys, if you're out there on your own, listen to some books, listen to, um, if you're religious, you know, look for some kind of spiritual guidance. Uh, don't be so focused on some, all this, just, uh, so, um, social media content, uh, make sure to consume something good as well. Okay. We're, our mind is kind of, is, if we just keep putting junk in it, uh, a bunch of social media junk and we're not putting anything positive in it then we're just we we could have a stressful day or even a stressful life and a more negative outlook on life if we're not putting positive information in our mind and it's it's not fun okay sometimes well i would i wouldn't say it's not fun but it's not the same entertaining as looking at some reels or looking at something that's uh just basically entertaining something that's learning is going to cost you it's going to cost you some uh it's going to cause you some brain power. Okay. Anytime you learn something new, it's kind of, your brain is like a muscle. Okay. So when you work it out and working a muscle out and you haven't worked out, or you have, you try to do some push ups and you can't do them. You're going to feel that strain in your body, in your pecs. You're going to feel it in your chest, in your arms. You're going to feel that burn the same with your brain. When you're learning something new, it's going to, it's going to fight against learning something new. It's going to, oh man, it's going to get more narrow minded. What it's called. It's, it's, it happens when we, when we, when something gets triggered and something we don't know, we, we go into more of a narrow minded state, try to be more alert of that. And, 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 and just like working out and exercising, it takes a little bit more, more practice to train that brain to take more information in, or I'm going to take info in, or I'm going to learn some, some content than, than just, um, senselessly going through some some uh, reels. Appreciate everybody that's joined us. Uh, Mac Milley, uh commented about the thirty percent. Dang, only thirty percent. That's not good. Yeah, when uh, when I first got into diesel, I was reading a lot. I was reading a lot of literature on diesel, and I was surprised to find that out myself that how much energy is being spent and. You can you can see it in exhaust and you can see it in the exhaust. That's a lot of pressure and a lot of energy being expelled from that engine. So with technology, they're doing more and more by increasing compression ratio to be able to get more power because the more the higher the compression ratio, the higher the compression ratio, the more of a of the more torque you're going to get out of an engine, especially during that combustion, because you have um, you have a higher higher compression so if you have higher compression you have more force pushing that piston down whenever you do have a an ignition uh and during a combustion stroke or during a compression process but higher compression it causes more more um i would say it causes it causes more stress on the lower end of the engine so because all that all that force has got to be got to be absorbed properly and distribute it properly so that's why a lot of these newer engines more modern engines have less tolerance they don't have a lot of tolerance when it comes to their piston rods and clearance on the bearings and a lot of this maintenance even comes even more crucial when you're dealing with modern engines and getting more fuel or more extraction out of there so i appreciate i appreciate you uh um uh, highlighting or recircling back on that 30 percent appreciate that Thanks for everybody that's joined us this evening. If you want to share more of your success stories, make sure to hit us up in the comment section. I like the drive in four miles below the speed limit. That's a good, that's a good tip there. That's a good tip. Appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you. Um, also give me any specific tools or methods that you guys, if your technicians are out there doing maintenance on these engines, give me any tips. Let me know or if you want to share any tips or any tools that you use to, uh, to use to help during these, uh, during these maintenance processes, make sure to share that. 
Uh, Mendoza says, I have a 2022 Kenworth W900 and I get 4.6 MPGs. Thanks for sharing that. Thanks for sharing that. 6.4 is decent. 2022. What kind of engine do you have? And do you drive under the speed limit? What's your driving? What, what is your driving habits? I'm interested to know. And how much weight are you pulling? Those are all kind of uh, items that people would like to know to get it. Say, for example, you're not doing the speed limit. Say you're going 80. If you're if you're already getting 6.4 and say, for example, say, for instance, you do do 64 or 65. You're going to be able to probably bump that up to seven. Kevin Young says time is money. Yes, sir. That's why a lot of places are not shutting down, uh, especially when it comes to the transportation sector. Trucks are still moving. Shops are still servicing. Items are still moving. So definitely definitely if you if we if uh, if the truck if transportation stopped during the holidays man imagine how many imagine how much food you would have to stock before the holidays imagine that imagine how much fuel if fuel hauling stopped during the holidays imagine how much fuel you would have to stock people some drivers trump gas stations are more dangerous in some areas and they're not that dangerous in texas but I could imagine if fuel haulers stopped or transportation stopped, imagine how fuel stations would be. It would be it would be crazy. It would be crazy. And honestly, I see I don't know how I don't know when it's going to happen, but I, I see talks about carbon credits and and what they're going to be releasing is like you have to buy credits to be able to spend to, to expel carbon uh, it's just very, very, very odd. You know, I don't, I don't know why they would try to approach it that way. Mac Millie, I fucking hate it. He says he hates it when cars cut, cut into your stopping distance. You know what? I do too. Even if you're in a, a regular passenger vehicle, people don't understand following distance no more. If you, if everyone follows following distance, if everyone would. Pay attention to their following distance and drive courtesy, drive with 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 courtesy and think about others and not be in a rush. I honestly think our highways would be a lot safer and there would be less traffic. But everyone is just riding each other's butt, trying to play race car. And uh, I call it some people with new vehicles. I call it new vehicle syndrome where they get a new vehicle and they just completely don't know how to drive their hoopty that they had before. And I'm not down in anybody that drives a hoopty, but their hoopty that they had before their new vehicle, they were driving very cautiously. They were driving speed limit, following distance, putting their blinkers on. Now, when they get a new vehicle, a new car, they just for, totally forget how to drive. And they drive like morons. But yeah, so Mac Millie, as I mentioned earlier, try to be the 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 example. Try to be the, the perfect example. Lead by example. You do the following distance. Keep that following. Don't be the, the 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 truck driver that doesn't let anybody in, you know, especially when it's traffic. I know a lot of people, some truck drivers will get mad if you try to get, like, like you said, you're following distance. But if you're dealing with traffic and people have to get over and there's traffic in a lot of areas, you know, yeah. But if you're on the highway and you're doing 70, whatever you're doing, the speed limit and you got your following distance and you're chilling. Yeah. It annoys me when cars get in front of you. They think, oh, uh, he's got four or three, three car distance in front of him. Let me let me fit right in there. And that's just yeah, I understand. And especially for trucks, I can understand how much uh, how frustrating that is. It's frustrating in a, in a passenger vehicle. I can imagine how it is in a truck because you're having a break. You will have to break and you're having to create that distance again. So shout out to everybody that's joining us this evening. If you are a technician and you're driving on the road, maybe take these tips as well. Not only just the drivers. Do you guys sell rebuilt engines? We do sell engines that have already been rebuilt, but mostly they're going to be from the manufacturer. We don't do third party rebuilds. Uh, we did. We've had had issues um, with getting quality builds from third party or aftermarket. So usually we'll get three quarter engines from the dealer because they come with warranty uh, and it's just a lot less hassle. Uh, we do rebuild engines, but 
when you look at the cost and the time, swapping out a block is going to be more cost efficient and time efficient than uh, rebuilding a whole engine. But in some cases, if parts aren't available, um, rebuilding the engine is going to be one of your only choices. So we do rebuild engines. We do rebuild DD15s and Series 60s. If the conditions are bad, if it's a very high mileage engine, we would recommend doing a three quarter a three quarter build, which is basically getting a a build that's uh, already uh, three basically already built from the the whole block and in the internals. The only thing we have to reuse is the head turbo and all that. So yeah, we do the uh, we do rebuild uh, Detroit's Caterpillars, Volvos, and um, and uh, basically anything that's on the road, to be honest with you, depending on the condition, you know, I want to mention that it depends on the condition. If you have an engine with very high mileage uh, and a lot of wear on it, it may be best just to do another block. Coffee's getting cold. Thank you, everybody that's joined us this evening. Be sure to share your experience. Make sure to hit that like and share the video. Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaners is are any good? You know, uh, Gerardo, how you doing? Long time no see. Gerardo, thanks for joining us. Got Gerardo on the chat. I think you still, if you still have the, uh, the Series 60 Fuel, Lucas, now... If you're running a Series 60, you may be able to be all right. What are you doing with fuel uh, cleaner? What I've my experiences with fuel cleaner one time on the M14. This is one of the reasons why I stopped using fuel cleaners. It was on the M14. And if you guys know what M14 is, that's a Cummins. It was on the M14. And we use uh, some fuel cleaner. It was hot shot. And I'm not saying use them, but what fuel cleaners will do, it can actually uh, dislodge some of the um the build up that the fuel that the fuel actually builds up and, and it's it's just it's that black hard stuff and it will build up and if you use a fuel cleaner you can risk the chance of of course breaking that 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 black um build up it's kind of like i don't have the exact term for it but it's 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 a hard build up it's it can be gummy as well now that can what what once you once you run a fuel cleaner and say for example the 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 build up is in the fuel lines or uh, somewhere in, somewhere in the in the process of going to the injectors when you use fuel cleaners what's going to happen is you're going to break that gunk loose and you're going to send it to the fuel injectors so when we use this on an M14 one time we used it to oh let's clean up the injectors boom we had like two injectors just die on us because the cleaner basically broke the build up broke the build up loose whatever it was built up and of course it went straight to the injectors and boom we had bad injectors what i would recommend is replacing the fuel filters fifteen thousand miles making sure you're fueling in quality places if you can get quality fuel keeping an eye on your fuel tanks if you see a lot of black buildup in your fuel tanks I would recommend getting those fuel tanks clean because even if you're using fuel cleaners, it's not going to clean those tanks. That is, it, those tanks have to actually be cleaned out. They need to be power washed out and get that black stuff, that black sudge, the sudge, sludge, sorry, that black sludge out of out of your system because all fuel cleaners are going to do is break that sludge loose, make and make your fuel actually thicker and can cause some problems with your engine or your injectors. But I appreciate you joining us, Gerardo. I haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're doing well. Longtime customer. Chico says, uh, my fuel efficiency changed after driver changed. Yep. If if you change, if that's definitely going to happen, then I would definitely get with the driver on what his driving habits are. Or I would do, I would try to use technology, you know, use the e-log. A lot of these e-logs are giving you more information as a to be able to monitor you can monitor their speed limit you monitor their braking you can monitor a lot of different uh metrics of how they drive so definitely if you have uh we have a comment of it look it sounds like an owner of a truck who uses drive has a driver and he says he's he he replaced it when he when he changed driver the fuel consumption one thing that 
I don't know how 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 um how popular it is now, but I remember when we used to run trucks a long time ago, there was a big it was popular to steal fuel. They were using fuel cards to sell the fuel off to somebody else. I'm not saying that's what your driver is doing. If if you're looking at you were doing six miles per the gallon and now you're five, that's more than more than likely going to be drivability. My fuel efficiency, and that's basic, basically why that changed. Mendoza says, are there any tunes you would recommend for more horsepower or better fuel consumption? I have a meeting with a, I have a meeting with a popular tuner tomorrow. Um, and I may have some recommendations, but what I want to mention, what I, what I want, what I would like you to keep in mind is more horsepower with an with a diesel engine all it needs is more more air and more fuel so if you want more horsepower you're going to use more you're going to need more air and you're going to need more fuel now our topic is conserving fuel so if you want more horsepower and two of those items are going to be more fuel or or air which is you know different manifolds different uh, ter different turbos different tune you're gonna be ha you're gonna have issues you're gonna you're gonna have more fuel consumption unless you're spec'd out with higher horsepower and you're still driving a speed limit if you want that extra horsepower and you're still using doing um you know cons good driving habits then you you could still you could get better fuel mileage but if you're looking for more horsepower just to be able to get up those hills faster or be able to do 80 90 on the highway you're not going to get better fuel mileage but i'll let you know how this meeting goes tomorrow i'm not a big fan of tuners but this particular this particular tuner has a um they have a a basically a certification from carb basically letting them do the tunes so i i'll see how this meeting goes tomorrow i'll let you guys know but definitely, uh, I wouldn't go with any tunes that are just out there, um, especially any kind of deletes or any elimination or any kind of modifications to the after treatment system. I know there's a big um, following out there that are deleting trucks, but you got to understand, even I was I was looking at I was researching the the tuning company that I'm going to have a meeting with tomorrow and I was watching a video that they had about the process of getting this these this tune in place. And one thing that they mentioned is the amount of tunes that are happening um, that are not made for the particular model. So, for example, if you have a particular model engine and you go in for a elimination or a delete, all they're doing is reloading. All they're doing is downloading another log file that's not for that particular model engine so the efficiency is shot a lot of these tunes are you're going to feel power right away because basically all it's doing is dumping more fuel but not worrying about longevity which is a big deal when it comes to these modern engines once you start dumping all this fuel you're going to have a lot of a lot of problems which People are saying, no, no, I don't have no problems. Man, I'm only sharing our experience of what we see in the shop. Okay, we see people coming in, low power, complaints, issues with the head, bent valves, burnt valves. Uh, you're basically cutting down the life of the engine. It's not like a it's not like a smaller, uh, smaller V8 um, diesel engines. Those those can probably take a little bit of a tuning and not have so much effect on them. But these bigger engines. For some reason, these tunes are not they're not taken well and you, and you can definitely cut down on the longevity of your engine. So I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate that comment, Mendoza. DL says he does like e-logs. You probably one of the one of the one of the the, the few that likes that likes the um, e-logs. Chico says I have been through an audit. I was. I was the dispatcher. It's better to tell the auditor the truth because they have multiple ways to find out the same information. When he was done, he writes a letter. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're, I've always practiced honesty. I don't I don't feel like lying is a is a choice just because you have to think about a lie. You have to remember the lie. And these 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 auditors are, I mean, in any case, but if we're talking about auditors, they see it all the time. They see it all the time. They know how to, 
They know how to question you. They'll question you already knowing they're going to find out from documentation. Documentation is there. And if you don't have documentation and, you, and you're supposed to have documentation like maintenance records, maintenance records is very... I don't understand going back to DL when he wanted to buy that truck. I don't know. Some guys will try to buy a truck and they say that they don't have maintenance records. When FMCSA requires the carriers to have maintenance records on file. So, I mean, maintenance records should be kind of like a passport to the truck. It needs to, and you have to have maintenance records to be able to even kind of like shot records, not passport, but shot records. I mean, if you don't get, I mean, everyone's got their opinions about shots. I don't want to get into that, but it's not, it's not a good idea to buy a truck with, with no maintenance history is what I'm getting at. What can I achieve with 20 K? I don't have a truck or insurance yet. If you don't have more than that, I don't want to be like the bearer of bad news, but it, you won't see all your cost. Um, Kevin Young uh, he's a, he, he says 20 K should be a reserve and that's right. So if you're starting with 20 K man, that's not enough to get in the business because insurance alone is going to cost you a lot of money fuel. You're going to be, you're looking at not, and, and right now is not the best time to get into the, and get into, uh, and get into trucking because of the, the low demand. I was just reading an article before we got, came on live. Q, it says expected Q1 drop in U.S. trucking jobs, not likely to move the needle on pricing or capacity. U.S. trucking employment is poised to decline over the next few months as seasonal workers hired in the run up to the new year end holidays are dropped from carriers payroll. Just how many job trucking law, just how many jobs trucking law loses in the first half of 2024 will depend on the willingness of carriers to maintain payrolls despite weak demand. So there's not enough demand out there to add on more trucks. So I would say, hold on, hold on. Wouldn't be a good time to join. Yeah, I mean, Kevin right away says 20 K should be a, a minimum. That's kind of like a, a reserve. So you should have truck and everything going and have 20 K in reserve before starting. Brian says, I am the man. I appreciate it. Brian also says he appreciates the life. Thank you. I appreciate that feedback. CCCS says I have a 12, a 12.7. You're going to get everybody excited on this 12.7 Detroit S series. He's got 7.5. I have tune in the truck, 12 K oil chains with Rotella air filter change every 24 K. I fill up loves truck only 63 miles an hour over the road. Those three, three things get me 7.5. So I appreciate you sharing your success story. If you guys didn't hear that, this comment is coming from a driver. He says, uh, and you could probably, you could get this 7.5 and it doesn't have to be on a series 60, but he's getting 7.5 on an older engine. So you, you should better, you, there's no way that you could not get this same mileage on a modern engine. So he's getting 7.5 doing 12 K uh, oil change intervals, changing out the air filter every 24 K. And he only feel, fills up at loves truck stop, which is, basically what I brought up earlier about trying to fuel in, in areas that have quality fuel, 63 miles an hour is what he's driving, getting 7.3 miles to the gallon. Cheer, uh, kudos to you. I appreciate you sharing that. Appreciate that very, very, uh, very well. I know that people are able to use that. Even if you're a driver or you're a technician, this information is useful. So, so we're going to be to summarize today's, broadcast basically we talked about how to increase your mpg i talked about what affects fuel efficiency and also the importance of regular maintenance i gave you tips on maintenance driving habits and the importance of driving habits and also how aerodynamic trucks are actually able to produce a better fuel mileage because of that using technology cruise control very useful also you can use your onboard or your on in dash mpgs to track your mpgs your mpgs are miles per gallon is very important it's kind of like a baseline so if he's got if if we have this if we have a a, a viewer that has 7.5 
MPGs, which is very decent, very good. And you say, for example, he starts to decline. Now he knows, oh, I got something going on. That's another way to keep an eye on the performance of your truck and make sure everything's working properly. So I appreciate that. Kevin Young says he wants me to talk about gear ratio. Now, my advice towards gear ratio is do not change what the manufacturer has put. I wouldn't even change the tire size than what the nameplate on the manufacturer sticker says. That's how that truck was designed. That's how it was made to run the way. So once you start changing stuff, changing, for example, if you go with bigger top, bigger wheels, if you have a truck that was made with 22.5s and you want 24s, now you're creating a problem. Now your 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 speedometer is going to be off. Your truck's thinking it's going faster than it really is. So the data plate that's inside the door jam is going to have your tire size, your wheel size, basically the same as your tire size, gear ratio, all that information and when it was manufactured. I would recommend staying with how the truck was manufactured because once you start messing with different things, you can definitely cause some uh, unexpected problems or if you're lucky, you can get what you want. So be sure to... Um, to use these tips if you're interested in increasing your fuel consumption and if you're a technician and you want to give more value to your customers, definitely encourage this, these tips on improving their miles. We're going to have um, more lives coming up. I'm hoping to go live again. If you guys be sure to join us, be sure to subscribe to our channel and share the information as much as possible. Remember that everybody is welcome to join and chat and share their experience or give any tips. I appreciate everybody that has joined us this evening. Be safe out there. If you're a technician, take your time. If you're a truck driver, take your time. Everything is going to be all right. We'll see you guys. You keep on trucking. Thanks again for joining us, and everybody have a good night. Goodbye.